subs. It's what, what are we? Not popcorn. We are popcorn junkies. <laughs> Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. We are reviewing a film called Godland, which is a Danish Icelandic film. Don't turn off. No, don't turn off. Now, I obviously, I've, I've been to Iceland, which uh, lends a certain sort of, mm, a certain Do sort it. of volcanic sort of, mm, sort of terra firma kind of gravelly kind of. Mm. Yeah, all of those mm. things. And I've always wanted to go to Iceland. Have you I have to say this film did not endear me to Oh, okay. Well, that, that, that is interesting. The premise of this film is incredibly simple, yeah. isn't it? It's, start, it? it's incredibly sparse. It's incredibly, uh, you could argue, slow. But that's all part of it. Yeah. It's a meditative film. Yeah. Um, and it's a sort of very considered film. And it's a slow build. And let me just say that it's, um, I don't know whether this will be a turn off or a turn on for viewers, but it was certainly a turn on for me. There are loads of Icelandic ponies all the way through it. And an Icelandic pony is a specific breed of hardiness, Mark. I was fascinated I by I love that. a horse with long hair all over its body. Yeah, we call them ponies, but I noticed they call them horses. No, Icelandic horses, they have long hair all over their bodies. There's, there, there are so many. Almost woolly mammoth-esque. So this priest, Danish priest, is sent by his sort of superior. senior superior yeah. off to Iceland to essentially build a church Bring the Lord. Bring the Lord and like a missionary, sort of, oh, you know, oh. um, civilise society then. Mm. So he heads off on a, on a ship. He's told that the journey will be harsh and he's told that the people will be not like the people he knows. And he's told that there might be the smell of volcanoes as if they're coming out of somebody's bottom. Yeah. In well, that's journey. Iceland for you. Well, there you go. Yeah, not the shop, the country. No. no. Oh, um, <laughs> But right at the front of the film, there's a, a little quote or a sort of paragraph that says this. A box was found in Iceland with seven wet plate photographs taken by a Danish priest. These images are the first photographs of the southeast coast of Iceland. This film is inspired by these photographs. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I love films that were inspired by something. Now, it's not true. Oh. It's not actually based on those things. The director oh. made that up. But oh. he, he made it up because he thought it was poetic. And it is poetic. It is I think poetic. it's a really lovely detail. I wish you had told me it wasn't made up. Then. So, wasn't Priest it? sent off to Iceland. He's yeah. like a man with a movie camera, but he's a man with a wet plate camera. Yeah. It's very cumbersome. Very it's bulky. a big box. Um, some people have been sort of comparing it to the cross, yeah. carrying the cross. And they are taking crosses, aren't they, as well? They're, well, they are for a while, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was get this is kind of like uh, once he'd been sent and he was on the boat and you have this motif all the time of him putting up putting up his incredibly cumbersome uh, camera and this I like in order to take a wet plate photograph in the late nineteenth century or the, the late eighteenth century uh, that must be nineteenth century you have to have a very long expo exposure yeah you have to have silver on a piece of glass and it's a chemical reaction yeah he was lovingly mm. doing the glass stuff, yeah and he? you know it comes in cases he has his glass thing yeah, set up and the photograph uh you know is is sort of imprinted if you like onto the glass but what that necessitates is people to sit incredibly still yes. for a long period yes. of time I was fascinated um, by that, yeah and i don't know I, this is a film i think and tell me what you think that works on so many thematic levels yes and it doesn't work sort of narratively in a way because the narrative is nothing more than him going yeah it's in two halves as well yeah. it's him going and then the bit where he's there and it's the difficulty of that journey it's incredibly yeah. arduous yeah. You're shown and you're explained in great detail how they need pasture to be the horses. You have to buy it to go I over the tundra. I loved all of that, yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, I thought it did a good job of sort of showing the practical issues, which really it reminded did. me actually of how we had to pass across the Arctic. What yeah. did you think of the main actor who played the main priest? Okay, well, I think he was very, very, he wanted to do the right thing. I mean, I think he was very sort of religious, if you like. I can't think of a different word. I think mm. what, I just don't think he had a clue what, what the journey would throw mm. at him. I mean, he did, he's very taciturn, isn't he? He doesn't say much, but I think he was very, very with it and loved God dearly and was going to do exactly bring mm. God to the people mm. as long as he could take his photographs. I think all of that was absolutely genuine. But then, if you like, the journey and the fact that he, he'd been warned, but you can't be warned about a journey mm. like that. It showed how absolutely agonising mm. it was. Mm. Yeah, it was a pilgrimage, wasn't it? P absolutely I mean, it a had, pilgrimage. I was getting all sorts of other films kind of crashing in, like The Revenant. You know, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's like a journey. Yeah, that's actually a good, good yeah, and it's about how the journey, the mission. sort of the mission, it reminded me of the mission with yeah. Robert De Niro years ago. And you've got this sort of impassive, which is what you've got in Iceland, landscape. It's dangerous, mm. it's vast and it's huge, but it's incredibly still. Yeah. And it's very uncaring. Yeah. And it just sits there. Yeah. And you're labouring across it as a little yeah. kind of fiddly thing called a person. There's um, a line, isn't there, where it's said, said by one character, it's beautiful and dangerous. Yeah. And then is it the priest that says, it's beautiful 
and dangerous. So he splits the two words right. up so that we know that he's yeah. not. He's starting not to deal with it too yeah, well at yeah, that yeah. point. And on this, so you've got this sort of intrepid group. They're sort of heading off. He's got a translator. I mean, the 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 priest, our priest, uh, is doesn't speak Icelandic. He only speaks Danish. So there's this one step removed, isn't yeah, there? He was trying to learn. Them, on, he's he? trying to work, learn on the boat. He's taking a mate with him. Yeah, who dies? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, he, falls, he, off the, he, falls off the falls off falls off the horse and loses yeah, his crucifix. Yeah. And I thought that was a really symbolic moment. The but that moment... was important because up until that point he wasn't alone, and then suddenly he realised yeah, he was absolutely. alone. Absolutely. So language went, mm. but so too did, uh, in a sense, his faith was put under yes. pressure because the yes, cross at that point. goes yeah. swimming off down the river. Yeah. Um, he's starting to doubt. Well, he's starting to doubt. And what I thought was really magical about this film was that it was the landscape and the country was in a sense pulling apart the artificiality of what men create, i.e. religion. Yeah. So Iceland doesn't give a fuck if you're no, religious, no. you've got a cross, no. building a church. Yeah. You're going to have whatever response you have. You're going to be challenged by this landscape yeah. as a human. Yeah. Um, and I thought that's what this film was about. This film was about losing faith in the face of surviving. Yeah, it was. And within surviving, I include falling in love, feeling lust, yeah. fighting. Yeah. You know, there's all these elements where you see this priest go through experiences that yeah. you just thought, wow, I wouldn't expect a priest to do that. He's very, what's the word to warn people? He, he's very remote, isn't mm. he, from us? I mean, he doesn't give us it's anything really. Very distant. Very that distant, that's the word I'm looking for. So, I mean, you have to sort of get used to that. because Yeah, because at first I found that really frustrating. I, I, I mean, and don't get me wrong, there, was, there are moments in this where they hold the shot for so long. And yeah. There is one moment in the middle of the film, which was very Revenant-esque, where he falls ill, doesn't he? Or he's tired yeah. and he collapses. And there's some, there's a couple of really powerful panning shots, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And as you saw the band with Ragnar and everyone, they leave him for dead. Yeah. And the camera does such a long pan across the landscape, which again, all that sort of stuff was reminding me, this landscape makes you irrelevant it as does humans. Not does, it not does not care. Does not care. But it also, it doesn't not care in a malevolent way. No. It literally is the manifestation of indifference, yeah. the landscape. But the camera kind of tilts down and you find him. Yeah. And you think, oh God, he's dead. Yeah. And what I thought was quite weird about the film was there was no explanation as to why we suddenly come back to him in no, a sort there of wasn't. community. there wasn't, no. But they didn't need to be in a way. I mean, no. it was a more sort of gentle film in that well, respect. Well, I, I read that as potentially being given to us as a, almost a rebirth. Uh, well, possibly, yeah. yeah no, yeah. one could What well, did you make of the community? The community he gets to. Yeah, so yeah. they're building a church. Presumably they knew he was coming, right? They must I'll have texted or whatnot. so, up. yeah. I mean, it's sort of very, they give us some information and not others. The man who sort of um, opens his home to him uh, has two daughters and um, he's he's like the judge and jury of this whole place. Well, he's he? the patriarch. Yeah, he's the absolute total patriarch. He's a landowner, he's in charge, he's sort of head of the community. Yeah. Whatever. He came in and he was treated oddly. He couldn't fully get in because he couldn't understand what everyone was saying. Ragnar was back, which was curious because you sort of thought, well, you left him for dead. Yeah, that's true, actually. That was the bit I didn't understand the most, was no. where he came from. Yeah. And uh, and the beef is getting stronger with him, isn't it's it? It's getting much stronger. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. real antagonism there. And yeah. then the, the, this patriarch, this father figure sort of says, don't fall, you're not staying in this house, mate, because I've got two daughters. Yeah, which is fair enough, wasn't but it? he was a priest, and you sort of think, well, it's not, well what does that mean in modern parlance? <laughs> no, exactly. Priests are at it like nuts. And also the girls had gone into his room as he was waking up, and I think, you know, yeah. naked priest. Yeah. You know, and, to... and throughout, you have moments, which were curious moments, where he takes these photographs and you see his subjects sitting for shots yes and i was trying i was sort of thinking god well, you know what is what is the relevance of all of this what sort of poetic thematic are they talking about it and i think i don't know whether you got this from it because the story this is a spoiler review the story runs out that essentially he kind of does become romantically involved with yeah. someone he sort of sort of something awful happens to ragnar almost accidentally but yeah. because of a fight between the two yeah of them. yeah and because of a dog screaming barking dog outside of a church the dog yeah the dog was great ward. he goes out and he tries to escape yeah yeah and he comes to a sort of grisly end he does doesn't he um and from and so, and so it's all about the temporariness of life and he was he, never going to survive though i think no. we, we were well aware of that from the beginning yeah didn't, didn't you think yes i did yeah, i yeah. did i mean he was yeah, he wasn't I mean, he was robust a, enough physically. Was this, or, yeah, square pegging around. I mean, he so was not yeah. going to survive. But there was a lovely moment in that moment. And the reason I'm jumping ahead is because I then I want to go back and talk about the significance of the photographs. Is yeah. that, that towards the end, the patriarch who does the deed with the priest. Yes. He talks. There's a really interesting line where he says, I don't want to think 
I just know or something like that. Yeah. I've not been put on this sort of earth to think. I am here to just know what's going on, which is a curious distinction. Because yeah. it's like he's saying, we just live. And he said something else about, I won't be here. We're not here for long. Yeah. And, you know, it's a short period of time, what have you. And so for me, the photographs became, in a sense, the only way that people would live beyond this moment and so it became an act of preservation so you had this curious thing of because well, in the end it took the place totally of god didn't it I mean, yeah exactly was, that was yeah. that was sort of his his faith and this became his religion and i thought there were some great scenes where you know he just was lining people up in front of the camera like the younger daughter who mm, wouldn't stand on, on the right yeah, side yeah. of the horse and all of that and just the still frame i suppose in a sense keeping a re you know this was going to be the one record of all these people and i think that was underlined by the fact that you had these locked off shots of a horse rotting away so I know, you saw time that was moving. curious wasn't it that i found that so moving though but again it's the way in which nature and the earth oh just i know, I know on. that yeah but i found i thought he used it incredibly um well in a sophisticated way but also sort of in a sad way so mm. it came at a point in the film where didn't it come at a point in the film where he we knew he was going to die or he'd already died even or something Isn't, doesn't it come towards the end well, this was almost like an icelandic western because this yeah, very much it, wasn't it? Very you know much the so. sort of going out into the wild frontier and yeah. all of iceland's wild frontier yeah. i was just thinking that didn't really happen you you say that they found this no 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 he made that I mean, i'm just wondering who would ever have made the choice to go out with the camera in any case because i mean who well, would take photos true. of that sort of landscape I mean, well, he doesn't. He, well, that's the point. He doesn't yeah. take any photographs of landscape. No, he doesn't. It's He's only people. interested in portraits of people. Yeah. And that's why I think it's quite significant that you're seeing real life things decompose and die. Yeah. You're seeing a landscape that's implacable and implacable and, and, is and the best different. Word of all. Yeah, and indifferent. I mean, even the ponies are implacable. Yeah, but they die, and everyone dies, and there's a sense of movement. There's a sense of aging. There's a sense of. You know, right down to, I thought one of the most powerful scenes in it was when Ragnar, the guy that the priest has beef with, yeah. sits on a chair and confesses all of his crimes. Oh, I thought that was a brilliant a scene. And at the end of each scene, he said, you know, I have coveted other people's wives. Pray for me. No, I, I almost said I've had dirty thoughts. I, well, he does. He says, I've had, I've had terrible thoughts. Pray for me. I killed someone's horse. Pray for me. And yeah. I thought that was, it was incredible because that was his confessional. Was asking the priest to pray yeah, for him, no, no, he and was, the priest but, hated him. But the actual sort of way that he did it was like a lamentation. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It was like, a, but it was a monologue, so he'd say a line, and it was quite musical. And he'd it say, was "Pray for musical, me, pray for me." Yeah. After the, and I found that really moving. It was so moving, man. That was a confessional moment, which you would have thought a priest would connect with. Would have changed his mind in but terms. It precedes the most awful moment yeah. of violence. Yeah. Which for me was the moment you went. The priest has lost it. Yeah. The priest has lost his faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Rag Ragnarok, or Ragnarok has, yeah. has opened up big time. Yeah, and it was straight after that, wasn't it, more yeah. or less? Yeah. yeah. We should talk a bit as well about the amount of song, because everything's sung. Yes. I mean, really, isn't it? Which mm. can drive me mad. I Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that just, I found that just sort of indigenous -y kind of folkloric okay. kind of stuff. It's beautifully shot. It has the aspect ratio that reflects yeah. his kind of wet plate photographs. Which I thought that was, that was I love that. Yeah, and he did, Similarly, with, with certain mountains and volcanoes, he did the same thing through different sort of light and weather as he did with the dying horse. Yeah. Um, I thought the end was very clever. It was very low key. Yeah. And very thoughtful. Yeah. Because <laughs> he sort of, you know, it was a kind of, they, he knew it was going to happen and the guy who did it sort of apologised and said, well, you know, I'm afraid there's no other route here. Yeah, You're yeah, like, because right, he knew okay. everything that guy did. What mean? do you think it was about? Well, faith or loss of faith or not being able to keep one's faith. Don't we all a million times a day think, is there like, is there anything here except us or mm. is there anything above us or mm. is there anything? I mean, mm. Iceland, it's funny because I've always, I've always had a romantic idea about Iceland. I know you've been yourself, but I always thought I've seen so many shots of it and films about it where they've, they've the landscape has played such a huge part. But in this, it, it worked exactly on me of it's too harsh. It's mm. too harsh. Mm. Sort of, I thought, and and the and the, the filming is beautiful. It's mm. absolutely beautiful, and places look gorgeous. But I thought I don't want to go to this place. It simply is too harsh. Mm. And in that respect, I felt like he must have felt at certain times. Mm. Did in, he do any actual preaching? I can't even. Remember. No, he tried to, and he couldn't. And he the couldn't, dog, the dog, kind of distracted out, him, and he, he went yeah. out. Yeah, that's absolutely. when the guy said, "Leave it to me." Didn't yeah, he? I mean, he does no preaching. No. He doesn't spread the word at all. And yet, in the face of that. The only thing that was going to last beyond faith, actually, because that didn't last, uh, were photographs, were images. And in a weird way, you could say it's a bit of a tone poem to the act of filming. 
yeah. or photograph it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing that people forget is that, and I think there were, I think this was shot on film because there were a lot of flecks coming. Oh, up is there. that how you know? And you can see bobbles, and you can see the chemical. Yeah. And, and what the reason a lot of filmmakers like working on film, Tarantino and all that lot, is they like the chemical aspect. It's a physical, it's a chemical reaction. Yeah. F celluloid. It's yeah. about you know, and his thing with silver. I thought that was good. Yeah. And he'd run out of silver, so he couldn't take more. Photo. And I thought what was neat was the fact that that conflict that happened between him and Ragnar. I know that's not his name, or Ragnar. Yeah. Came out of Ragnar really wanting one an image. He's, he's like, I want a selfie. I, just want one. I want a selfie. But he was so sort of like, he just said just one, and he yeah. couldn't understand why yeah. I wouldn't just give him one. And I think maybe also the film reminded us of how special of an image of ourselves yeah. once was. Yeah. And it's become true. so de rigueur now yeah. that we have images all the time, oh, selfies and everything. That actually, selfie, yeah. in fact, this, that's interesting. The fact that he had to use silver, they were like precious. Metals. Yes, precious artifact. Precious artifact. Didn't you feel that there were there were moments though? I I did where I thought, oh, he's being, he's being absorbed by the community and he's getting into the community. The scene where they all wrestle. Oh my God, that was a fascinating. It was scene. a fascinating scene, and they he held it for a long time. I mean, mm. he did about three different people mm. wrestling, didn't he? And I got fascinated because it was a proper wrestle, wasn't it? Do you know it? what that scene for me was? That scene was this film's Travis Bickle moment. Yes. That was almost the point at which the priest transitioned to a more animalistic side yes, of himself. Yes, yeah, because he wouldn't go over, no. would he? And he knocked the patriarch. And when his leg kept going, I thought, oh my God, he's yeah, playing the game, yeah. not just playing it. He's yeah, gonna... at that point, it became a wrestling sex addict. Yeah. Didn't he? Went off into the bar. He turned. He yeah. turned. How would you sum up and score, Mum? Well, there were so many ponies in this film, I adored it, <laughs> wandering across Iceland. All the things that we've said, really, it's very, very um, slow. But in a good way. Yeah. I loved I loved the slowness of it. Yeah, I do. I mean, I mean, it's only as slow as a horse going across ice, and that went on for ages, but mm. I thought that was fair enough. It's a mindful horses watch. were going across ice. I mean there is mindful. drama, but yeah. but it's mind there's Yeah, and whenever in the it. drama comes it's sort of so enormous in a way because we've had so much yeah, in between. True. That's a good point. Um but um I, th I just thought it was fascinating. I thought although the moments where he interacts with other people are weird, we knew by now that he was weird. Mm. And I felt for him in a weird way. Although, in many ways, he's a totally unsympathetic character, isn't he? Oh, yeah, you he doesn't care. give you anything to get sympathetic. No. And when the when the older of the girls clearly fancies him, falls in love with him, you know, it's sort of like thinking, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, God, the score. I'd, get, I'd score it quite high. I'd score it 85. Okay. I mean, in a sense, I felt real conflict between him having faith and at the time believing in this modern technology. Yeah. I almost felt the two shouldn't have sat <laughs> alongside yeah. each other. That would have created an internal conflict for well, him. I felt that there wasn't that. I felt that essentially what we were seeing was a man who somehow had become a was priest, but things. was actually interested in, yeah. in... Well, then it's a film about mortality and immortality, yeah. and the closest thing to immortality rather than God are these wet plate photographs. Yeah. And I think that that's quite poetic. You could argue it takes an awful long time to do that. Um, I think you really summed it up well. It takes a great long time to get to places, but when it does, it adds a certain sort of piquancy and drama yeah. to them. It was like an Icelandic apocalypse now. It Heart of Darkness. Yeah. Except not at the end of a stream. It was just <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a wooden yeah. barn. Anyway, I was surprised by this. I, I, I thought, wow, OK. Because at times I found, I think it's really important to say it, it, you can find something difficult and slow and you would potentially use the word boring but we are not trained in modern society no. now to actually sit with anything and this for me was refreshing because it forced me to sit on my hands sit still and think and watch um so i found and i've thought about it ever since yeah i think his his other film although it's, it's obviously not set in iceland but it's very slow as well and i think mm. he's got using the same things so that's what interests mm. him sort mm. of almost mortality, mortality. Yeah, every executive producer i've worked with i was just imagining them screaming short on the shot Cut! <laughs> Were you? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, I, I think I'd probably give it about the same as you. I'd give it, I think I might give it, did you say 85? Yeah. I think I'll give it about 83. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Go and see it. Give yourself a treat. <laughs>